Hola. Hey. So what was the beginning for that? The hello kitties, hello kittens. Uh, what did she say? Uh, that should be our uh, intro. Hello, cool cats and kittens. Yes, that's that's what we want. Uh, so shout out to all you guys. Um, if you're watching on the replay, uh, please stick around. Let us know um, in the comments, say replay. We want to know who's watched afterwards. We know a lot of you guys uh, will probably be watching afterwards. But um, for those who don't know, or depending on how we cut this video up and put it on YouTube or podcast or something else, just so you guys know, uh, my name is Aaron. And my name is Christian. And today we're going to talk about something that uh, I, you know, I've heard of actually a similar topic across a lot of other like online entrepreneurs, but not really specifically this, which is, um, should you be investing in your business right now or saving? Should be should you be like hoarding money and just kind of waiting this out, or should you be investing in your business, whether it's through a course, whether it's through a program, whether it's a new service, uh, what you should be doing for your business. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So are we good? Are we live everywhere? Um, as far as viewers? Cool. Awesome. So uh, yes, let's uh, roll that beautiful bean footage intro. Hello, hello. All right. Oh, this is cool. I've seen the, the little part of the replay. Um, so I was going to pose this question to Christian because he's also a business owner and we may have different thoughts about it. Uh, but there's a couple of things we want to cover with you guys and reiterate uh, that each business is probably a little bit different, but maybe they're a lot more similar than we're thinking, which is should you be investing in your business or should you be saving? And we may be a little bit candid with what we're doing with our business right now too. Um, I don't know. It just kind of depends on where the, the conversation goes. But um, whenever we mentioned it this morning about what we were going to be doing for a live uh, Christian, uh, I don't know what his initial thoughts were, what he was thinking, but um, I'm also curious um, from another business owner's perspective, and then we'll get into some things that I think are good questions to ask. But what do you think, should be going on or what are what's your thought process been christian as just as a business owner you and i obviously haven't talked about this should you be investing or saving in your business like what's your personal opinion well we let me it. let me answer your question with another question and ask you what do you consider invest in your business like um either purchasing a course learning a new skill um hiring a coach like a consultant um something that's going to move the business um, forward. But when I say invest in, I mean, more than likely you're going to spend money, like you're spending money versus saving money. I think just investments, a better way to use it because if it's done correctly, it should be, um, I don't know, like it should be an investment, not a, an expense. Yeah. So does that I mean, answer your question? Yeah, kind of. But I also think that not, you don't necessarily have to spend money. Um, there are a lot of res free resources out there and even free trials for software that will potentially help you and your business and how do you manage uh, your customers and your employees. And it's, a, it's, it's something that you don't necessarily have to spend some money up front. Uh, I mean, there's some companies that are doing 90-day uh, trials um, just so you can kind of uh, use their, obviously they're being smart about it, right? You're using their product, you're kind of mm -hmm. getting used to uh, using their products so at the end of that 90 day trial, hopefully when this is all over, um, your business might completely change or pivot into this new thing that you're investing in right now. Right. So I think that the investment part is also, I think time, um, and also free resources. So before I respond, I want to say hi to Jonathan. Looks like he's on there. He joined us, um, over there at brute force strategies. And then, uh, Julie Godfrey with, uh, barcode and plano hey guys um and please say hello and let us know you're here fyi for those who are tuning in or jumping in right now we're talking about and christian was giving just giving his perspective to whether or not to save or invest in the business because we haven't we haven't talked about this specific topic uh, back and forth anyway and i guess my response to yours christian is that i think that that's definitely the first route to go um because a lot of people haven't invested in the resources or bought that course to take their companies to the next level or something like that. Um, the only problem that I see with like a, a free resource is that um, 
sometimes you don't know the next step to take. For example, us, we've taken so many online courses now, or we've done so much online that it's probably a little bit easier for us to do so. But if it's somebody's first time taking a course, they may be able to get the education, but they may not know how to implement it, which is why I, I bring up the fact that like sometimes investing in your business is hiring a business coach, uh, which was a good investment for us. And it's been helpful for these times, but it's also um, not something that's free. Um, I don't know any coaches out there that are giving just free advice, but it could be a really good investment to set us up in the right position once we're um, not in this anymore or, you know, we go back to work or we go back to regular things. So, um, and then there's also businesses who don't have a choice. Like um, I want to give an, an example here. We can talk about it in a second. It's like um, yesterday I got a call from a local boutique up in McKinney, Texas, and she was, you know, they used to do about a pretty good sized business, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, actually probably more. I think it was like $50,000 a month or more. And uh, since people can't go into their boutique, it was just completely shut off. So they're up there. They have to invest in their business to either go online or really, I don't know what else they would do because if you can't have foot traffic and it's always been drawn to foot traffic, like you have no choice, which is, I guess my point from the very beginning is like, I think the answer is different for each person. So it should always be invest in your business. But to your point, it's like some people have the opportunity to invest for free. Other people may be forced to spend money because there is no alternative. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, I mean, the answer to, I would say majority of the businesses is, is to invest. And I think when I, when I think of invest in, in this particular situation, and we've talked about this previously, is just to take action. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether, you know, that is changing your procedures, um, changing uh, policies, adding new software, um, pivoting the services that you offer, uh, condensing the services you offer, niching down, you know, your services. Um, but I think it, no matter what, I think every business needs to take some sort of action and not just passively ride the wave of, of, of what we're going through right now. Right. Cause you don't know when it ends. I don't know when it's going to end. We may assume that, I mean, and the good thing is at least at this point, we're not going to get into politics right now is that it seems overall things are getting better. What that means timeline wise, we don't know. Um, I do want to, because we did leave a message uh, whenever we went live. So like Julie or Jonathan, are you, if you guys are still alive, can you comment below and just say you're still here? Um, there is an option where we can get you guys to come on. I would love to ask either one of you guys a question uh, more specifically for your business because I think that that would add a lot of value for people who are uh, watching even now and for the replay. So if you are a business owner who is live watching us, one of the five people or six people who are on, I don't know, um, how many are on necessarily right now but if you could uh, let us know that you're here jonathan awesome he said he's here would you be interested or okay with coming on here live and if so uh jack do you mind sending him or uh, commenting the link so that he could come on here this i want to hear his perspective uh from his business and if he's saving or investing or if he's been thinking about this or not i think that would be a good uh perspective instead of uh or add a little bit more value to the people who are listening just because of his type of business or anybody else's types of business versus us. Okay, cool. He said, yes. So as you're coming on here, we'll kind of continue on. Um, we've never brought somebody else on before. So uh, this will be an interesting bear with us moment. Um, but I also want to give an example of a couple of things like somebody who chose, there's two, I guess, two different types of businesses. Um, two people I spoke with, one two weeks ago and one um, just yesterday. So the the business owner from two weeks ago, uh, Christian, you know him as well, a real estate agent. And he said, uh, you know, business is as usual. And I was like, okay, so you're still like going to do open houses. You're still getting leads. You're still growing their businesses up. And he's like, oh no, it's business as usual in the sense that like he's nothing has changed with what he's doing, but he's not doing anything different in the real estate world. Like he's writing it out. He's not doing anything different. Um, so there's that perspective. And then well, I guess it wasn't yesterday. It was like a couple hours ago today. Um, I spoke to a guy who they're trying to set something up. Um, they're going to hopefully work with us. 
that in the next 90 days, they want to create a new website and a new sales funnel that's going to be uh, positioning themselves very uniquely so that whenever we do get out of this, they have a really good position to place in the marketplace for real estate and investing um, for people who can help themselves. So it's like two different approaches. One of them was, I'm just going to ride this out. I, I have enough deals to kind of sit on and I'm okay. And then the, the proactive one was like, no, this is the time I'm going to invest. I can't go show homes or I can't do anything or I can't teach, but I can build like the infrastructure to kind of sell. So it's just a different type of uh, perspective, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a part of just looking at the opportunities, right? And seeing, again, going back to the same theme of taking action um, and mm -hmm. doing something different to, you know, elevate yourself and, and get out of this, um, in, in a positive light. That's a good point. I think the, uh, I can't remember exactly the word that you used, but I mean, outside of the action, I think that's, uh, a good point there. Somebody's actually going to do something. How are we doing on Jonathan? Um, Jack, I know you may be able to, or I don't know if you can hear, if you can comment or not and let us know. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just got, we have a question for him. All right, Jonathan, I think uh, what Jack was saying is that we're going to pull you up here in a second. Like I said, bear with us here. This is uncharted territory. Um, so you should be coming up anytime now. I see me. What did you say? Oh, I said I can see okay. myself. Awesome. Um, all right, so Jonathan, quick question. Are you investing in your business? Like what's, or actually first off, what's going on in your business? Has it been busier? Has it been slower? Um, what's going on in your business right now? Um, or like, have you seen an impact in it? And for people, can you tell them a little bit about what you do? I guess that'd be good perspective. Um, too. Well, so I'm, I'm in the health insurance business. Um, so mostly I think it's overall going to net out as an improvement. Um, I am having to do some damage control, helping some people uh, make some changes, find some more affordable things, um, even helping them, you know, slide payments forward on their health insurance if they just if they've lost it, lost their job or whatever. Um, and so it just it's some people have canceled. A lot of people are joining. It just kind of, uh, but I think in in all, it's going to be a a net positive for me business wise. I can't hear you though. Okay. Um, as far as net positive, meaning like, okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that are uh, leaving jobs and are okay. So this is weird because we have to have Jack kind of explain, but okay. To get an understanding, Jonathan, you're saying, and let's recap, recap from what you're saying is uh, a lot of people are coming to you because they have to leave their job or are laid off or can't work and they have to figure out a health insurance plan. And so that's what I kind of got out of it. It's interesting. Um, but was that your perspective too, Christian? I mean, obviously, we don't have much to go I, off of for that. Yeah, I, I don't. This is not. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know what was said or I'm trying to listen to both conversations. It's just very hard to. Okay. So Jonathan, thank you for coming on, but we we're probably not ready to, uh, to have somebody cause we can't hear the conversation. So we will try next time and get better part of, get another part for that. Um, so moving on here, I just want to give some people examples of, uh, just more of a case study of something that we didn't know what was going to happen, but this lady had no other opportunity uh, option. She is over in McKinney or McKinney in Plano and has a brick and mortar business. It's all been foot traffic. And if it wasn't foot traffic, it was hospitality in the sense of like hotels, uh, restaurants, everything like that. Those were like her main customers. It, you got a little bit of foot traffic, I would say maybe 20, 30% of a business with foot traffic, but the rest of it was like hospitality and like big orders. And when this all shelter in place came into effect, 
and people couldn't go inside or they uh, were weary to do so, they just stopped shopping there. Um, so she took a desperate, uh, not a desperate, but like a, a different action and decided to uh, start running her business online. Luckily, she had an e-commerce site. Um, she just wasn't doing anything with it. She wasn't spending any advertising dollars, wouldn't spend any money on it and decided to uh, to do that. And yesterday we had like a, a call with her and we're like, okay, how are things going? You know, are you you know, getting close to where you were at before, like, let's hope that you're getting, you know, 60, 70% of your sales. We're not expecting anything crazy. We're just trying to uh, basically kind of toe the line and um, help mitigate any types of losses. And she told us, which was really cool. And we're kind of on a trajectory now, but she's making as much as she did last year at this exact same time. And she's not selling anything in store, uh, which is really cool. And it's, I think it's just an opportunity for other people, maybe, maybe just a little bit more of an encouragement to tell you that it is still possible for you to grow your business right now. I know we talked about this, uh, Christian and I did before, like on the live stream, like things that you could do and opportunities that you could do online for some businesses, but, um, we just didn't really have any real stats or real examples, but now we have somebody who's been running it for two weeks and are actually longer than two weeks, um, been running it for a while and has the same sales that she had from the previous year. So it's still possible uh, for you to go out there and grow your business. So I just want to use that as an example that, you know, if you're a food vendor or a clothing vendor or somebody like that who could sell something online and may be worth it for you to start investing and potentially change uh, your business. Cause I'm sure once she uh, starts to sell in person, then, uh, it will only help exceed her sales because she's got the online going and the in-person going. So I just want to give that as an example for you guys that there are still people out there making money and there's still people who are doing well um, in spite of everything that's going on. And then Jonathan, sorry about the uh, cutoff there. I don't know if you left a comment or not. Um, so, my question, my my question for you, Christian, as or um, if those people are jumping on live, uh, we don't have the opportunity to uh, bring you on like we were thinking. But uh, if you are live or even watching the replay now, uh, please leave a comment. We're talking about whether or not you should save or invest in your business. Um, and my question that I've been asking, or that people have been asking uh, me anyway, when I've just been talking to them, is. Uh, do you think things will go back to a quote unquote normal right now? And you're doing a lot on the website side of things, Christian. So I don't know if that necessarily changes from your side of the business, but um, I guess in your opinion, is that going, do you, do you see that changing the way that you're doing your side of the business or like the, anybody that you've talked to, like are their businesses going to change or will it go back to normal? Um, cause I know you're working with like some construction people, you're working with like all different industries, of uh, people who are going on right now. I don't know if they've talked to you about like going back to this quote unquote normal. No, I mean, I think the, I think it will go back to normal. I don't think this is going to have a, a deep impact. Um, obviously one of the things that might change is the way we have meetings and things like that. Um, and I guess the informalness of meetings since we're doing this sort of weird video while you're at home in your pajamas uh, type deal. So I think in that, in that respect, I think it might change like that. Um, I think overall, I mean, no, I think a lot of businesses are kind of going back to, you know, some of the things that they were doing. Hopefully if you're a business and you're trying out, you know, new applications and new things, um, new processes, uh, these are things that, yeah, it will potentially change. Um, but I don't think there's going to be drastic changes in the way we work. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Because I, I was just thinking, I'm yeah, I'm just curious. Do you think that's a, yeah, do you think that's a, a good thing that's not going to change or is it a, actually a bad thing? Indifferent? I don't well, I'm th I'm thinking because you're right. I think that people will go back to a sense of normalcy, but like we're talking about saving or investing right now. So if they ride it out and they're they're the the people who decided to save and the the people who decided not to invest in their business, so nothing changed. And to your point, like it just kind of goes back to normal. 
I feel like that's kind of a like a disservice to like this awakening, you know, whenever I guess the example I'd give is that like, if you're getting really close to like, like you almost get into a car accident or you almost run into something it like makes you think like, Oh dang, I need to pay attention to the road more. I feel like this should have been a reality check for, um, for business owners to say, look, I'm vulnerable because my whole business is built on this. And if something ever happens, like let's not assume it's another COVID-19 or something like that's going to happen, but something may happen in the business and we realize that we're vulnerable, but I think that we have a really short attention span because we're like, Oh, we're back to normal, but they don't do anything with their business. And I think that that's, um, uh, I don't know. I just don't think it's a a good thing to just go back to normal. I think we got to keep that in the back of our mind or change the way we do business. We are as a company, I guess, changing the way and we're, I guess it's pushed us to do something that we haven't, we said we've wanted to do, but it's never, we've never really done it because it's never been pushed. So that's what I, that's what I was trying to get at when I was trying to say like the, the back to normal, like, I mean, yeah. So, so, I mean, to some extent, yeah, the way that, you know, you go about finding new business. Sure. A lot of people are probably trying to figure out ways to do that online or through social media or through their websites. Um, but I mean, to be honest, I think still the hand to hand and the networking word of mouth is something that is never going to necessarily die or go away or drastically change. Um, and that's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, I think it will, I guess, change businesses in the sense that they will see the opportunity of, of, and, you know, the power of finding leads and, and customers online. Um, but I think ultimately they they will stay with what they know, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think of necessarily, I guess it depends on how long this goes, right? So if it lasts like one more month, I don't see businesses completely changing how they do things. Um, mm-hmm. If it lasts six months, then like, yeah, absolutely. That's definitely going to mark an impact and, and how everyone goes about literally everything day to day and business and um, everything in between. Yeah. That's a good point. So it's, I don't know, it's hard. Cause it, I think we're, yeah, we're obviously creatures of habits. So we want to keep it the same, but for those who I saw, there's a couple, two more people, three more people who jumped in. Uh, thanks. Let us know that you're, you're watching, drop a comment below. We're talking about whether or not you should be saving or investing in your business. Um, and if you have something to say, or if you have something uh, or a question, go ahead and drop a comment. We were going to try to bring people up, but it, we have technical issues. So um, if you have a comment, drop a, drop it below. We'll answer the, the question. Uh, this is more so. That we're saving them. Oh, well, uh, so Jack, our, our black mirror that you guys cannot see here, uh, was saying like some things that we're saving on. Uh, and I think Christian and I were proactive to this before anyway, just because, uh, we were trying to figure out something for uh, a system called profit first, which you guys should check out. All business owners should check out, but it was us going line item by line item with an accountant or yourselves or anybody and just auditing. Like, are we using this? Are we spending money on this? Does it make sense to keep this? Is there a cheaper alternative? And I don't think we've done that ever before, maybe once or twice, but uh, that's a good way to save. And maybe it's not a matter of say like to the point of like saving money, maybe you could use that money to reinvest. So that's just an option for you to do it. But I would say most businesses who have been in, in business for a couple of years, just spending money on dumb things that you didn't realize you were spending them on. Like we were spending, I don't know, 10 or $20 a month on something that we're like, Oh, we could be spending the $10 option or downgrading because we don't use it. Um, so I think there's always that option to save, but then I think the smart thing to do with that would be to invest in your business, whether like Christian's saying it's in a free course or a cheaper course or a coach or something like that. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't know how else you necessarily save on there other than applying for the PPP, uh, the payment protection program. You should definitely do that. It's kind of a mess, but, uh, that's a good way to save money or to get, uh, to alleviate some expenses at least for a month or two. So that's a good uh, program. We have not benefited from it yet, but it seems like a great program. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's companies that obviously have debt. Um, we're lucky that our company has never had any sort of debt, but things like, 
you know, just asking for a reduction or a different payment plan. Um, same with rent and utilities and things like that. I know our office building is offering some sort of discount now, but then you pay it later after this is all done. It was kind of a weird right. thing. You yeah, you end up paying the same amount, but you I guess you get a reduction now and then an increase uh, a little bit later. Um, right. But I mean it, that it just it helps cash flow, right? So um, anything and everything that you can do to to do to to help the cash flow and and increase that, um, I would definitely jump on it and, and try and do it. Now, besides actually you know saving, um, when we go back to investing in the business, um, some things that might not be uh, as a parent, um, obviously, when we talk about investing, I think we're talking more in the sense of, you know, spending advertising dollars on social media um, or Google um, or SEO or whatever. So mm-hmm. beyond that, I think also, you know, reorganizing and restructuring uh, your services. I think that's something that um, we've been doing for the past, you know, six months uh, that now it's we're clearly see in the picture that we've needed to do this a long time ago mm-hmm. and you know not offer 20 different things but niche down and package up some of those services into uh, results-based uh, services essentially um, and again that's been part of a six-month process that now we're at the point where we're sort of looking at everything and seeing like oh wow we should have had this done a long time ago um, and have these quote unquote, like signature services that we offer and not just say, Hey, this is the full list of 20 different things that we can do for you. Um, instead, you know, package these things up into more of a solutions based, uh, services. That's a, I think that's a, a, an excellent point is yeah, you can reinvest in your business without spending the money. Like we're saying with the course, but yeah, more importantly, looking at, your service offerings, are people buying them? And if not, um, what can you do to, to cater to your market? Um, Julie had a question, if we can pull it up here, um, I'll read it. It says, uh, it's interesting that we've pivoted to offer live stream classes just during this time. And now we are attracting some customers who otherwise wouldn't come into our studio. That's a good point. I don't know yet if we will continue once we are back to quote unquote normal, but we can see now that there's a demand and perhaps should make an ongoing investment. Julie, that's, that's a really, really good point. And, um, you know, I think that you guys offer something that's much not to, to change or to bash or I'm not trying to say that at all, but somebody who's got only an online version is like beach body coaches. So they, they've done the on demand and obviously it's a really successful model. But aside from that, what I'm saying is like, there's crazy demand for that and like Peloton and everything. Like let's just have an overall goal to get people more healthy. But I think that you guys could offer an amazing solution for people in person and online. Cause like you're saying there, there may be not be people they've wanted to do bar before, or they've wanted to go and see you guys, but they just have kids at home or they have like traffic, they can't get to it. And they're like, Oh, this is just too far for me. Um, so it may not be your bulk of your business, but maybe it's 75% in uh, store and then 25% is the online streaming. Um, and then you have, I guess it just, uh, you don't have reliance on just making sure that it's in, in store. Um, I'm also curious, curious, Julie, if, um, you don't have to share specific numbers, but like, I'm guessing you kept a decent amount of your clients by offering that on demand who said like, we, we like you, we want to invest in, uh, the barcode and we want to keep you guys around. Um, and you're going to offer the online version. Like I'm sure that people stuck around with you because of that versus just paying each month where you'd have to return their money back to them. But I was just, I'm more so curious, like if you've seen a good chunk of people stay around with you because you did offer that solution for them. Uh, that's, that's super cool. And especially when you think, uh, like Christian, he's like, he can't go to his gym right now. The 24 hour, uh, you go to 24 hour, right? Yeah. 24 hour. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't go to your gym. So, um, and there's a lot of people like that that maybe would have found out about you because they're they can't go to their gym or it doesn't work anymore. So that's that's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good example of what I was trying to say earlier. Yes, I mean, gyms and um, fitness studios and things like that are absolutely capitalizing on the fact that everyone's at home, so you have to work out at home. So yes, they're actually probably doing 
excellent and really, really well um, with this, but it's not something that I would put all my chips on, right? Mm -hmm. Because things are going to go back to normal and that demand is definitely going to go down eventually. Um, and people like to, you know, go to classes, group classes and have the encouragement of being able to slap some, some hands, um, high fives and all that stuff. So, I mean, that's something that, yeah, I think right now it's definitely changing. Um, and then obviously in the future, you will probably be able to keep a lot of these customers on, on these online classes. Um, but I still think the bread and butter is, is still going to be the, you know, the, this, uh, in person, you know, type studio, hopefully it's not the case. Right. Um, I think that's what we all want to do is be able to, you know, expand your, your services and, and do these things online, which just doesn't require you as much space in your studio or an amount of classes or amount of instructors. Um, but I mean, we just have to face the reality that, you know, we will go back to normal. We will go back to going to places, um, working out together and things like that. Yeah. And so I think that's, yeah, that's a good point from both sides and what Julie said too. Maybe it's not the bulk, like what Christian's saying. Maybe it's not, uh, maybe it's not 75% of your business. Maybe it's only 25. And I think that what this is teaching us all about, uh, our businesses is that, um, or just us as people, not even business owners, is that we really, really want to have interaction with other people. So more so now than ever, I think, Julie, you may have a resurgence of people who are like, I liked doing this uh, in my home, but man, I would love to go and actually make friends and I would love to work out with other people because having my dog jump on me the whole time or have a, you know, a kid like screaming in the background the whole time isn't as fun um, as probably going there and talking to other adults who are like-minded as well. So um, yeah, maybe it's not 50 to 75% of your business, but maybe it's a potential part of your business to get people warmed up to you, which, you know, like Christian said earlier, this is just an opportunity for you to learn about your business and in potential other options to innovate. And that's the only thing I think we're advocating here for is that, Saving isn't really about saving money. It's more about just sitting back and keeping the status quo versus investing, which is focusing on the fact that you should figure out ways to innovate your business and find ways to grow and thrive. Not that you'd go back to normal completely, because I don't think you should do that, but a better you or a better version of your company so that you can thrive in the future. And that's the investment part that we want to kind of reiterate to people. Yeah. Um, so this last question here, if this is not something that people are commenting, but for questions that we have prepared, if something like this would happen again, or let's say just a, another recession or something like that, how would you prepare or set up your business differently? So I think the best thing for us is that we should have had a disaster um, situation uh, planned. Like you can't plan for a disaster, like what type of disaster it is but you should have a preparedness act that if something happens like a tornado, a fire, a virus, if something isn't able to um, happen, these sets of expectations will happen. For example, we have this cash reserve. This is used for payroll so that nobody has to be laid off. This is our next steps for working remotely if it's a possibility. Um, this is the next step that happens if you know, these things meet, meaning that like we no longer have a place to work. How can we still serve our clients? So we need to have those two things in place. One, um, how can we still provide a cert, like provides for our employees to continue to help us provide services for our clients? And then two, how can we still provide services for our clients to grow? Um, and then as long as you, I think we answer those two questions, then you'll still do well because for, for us, it was figuring out a way to work remotely and then it was a way that we can still serve our clients online without ever having to um, compromise the quality of work and still communicate with them. So if anything from us, it's moving our positioning to where we have the option to do things more online, but we still have the flexibility to say, yes, we love to meet with our clients. We love to meet with people in person. It's, you know, we're humans. We want that, but we have the option if something ever did happen the flexibility to continue to serve people in that audience. And so I think that's what I would say is just um, a step-by-step -step situation of what we would do. We've kind of figured that out and I think we're still kind of figuring it out, mm -hmm. but um, 
we've kind of used this as an example. And I think how we quote unquote invest in our business now is that we use this as an example for the future to say, Hey, look, if it gets as bad as a coronavirus, we know what to do. We've been through this before. So let's document it and make sure that it's sm smooth and seamless for the future. Yeah. I mean, those were some of the same things that I wrote down, um, having some sort of emergency response policy. Um, and then obviously having the emergency fund. Um, and then something else that I wrote was niching down. That's something that I talked about before. Um, just making sure that obviously your services are, or maybe some of your services are recession proof or not maybe recession proof, but that you have the ability to, identify businesses that would still be running through a recession mm -hmm. um, or an economic downturn and that you can, you know, take advantage of that and serve those clients um, like you are serving, you know, everyone else right now. Um, so it may be not changing your services, but changing your targeting um, in order to get to these businesses that are still running, still doing business. Everything is just the same. Um, so I guess not niching down. Cause like if you would niche down and on a, uh, I don't travel know, what's agency, a, right. Yeah. A travel agency. I mean, if you're, if we were, a, 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 a yeah, a marketing agency for travel agencies, like we would be scrambling, looking around, like, how can we do this differently? Um, there's an actual example. Like that's an, a real example. There's a company, it's a really nice agency. They do, they used to do $200,000 a month, pretty good sized business. Uh, they went to, 20,000 and will probably go to zero um, in the next couple of weeks just because their industry is travel. So I think to your point, it's like, yeah, we got to look at what industries are, what are our, uh, what's our four walls? I think it's what it's called. Like uh, our shell, our food, shelter, everything else. Like, you know, that people are going to have to pay utilities. They're going to have to pay for their home. They're going to have to buy food and they're going to have to be able to like transport themselves or travel, uh, like not travel with a plane, but like, you know, their car. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's something that we, I mean, luckily we've, I think we've talked about this way back when, like what, 2016, I think you and I were talking, I at least remember like in the solarium talking and saying, we need to diversify the types of clients we serve because if there's any type of recession, what kind of companies are going to go out? And we tried to say, who can we best serve across the board? Um, so we kind of answered that question um, but yeah, it's definitely something we could work on even more. Yeah. I mean, I think that's because of the circumstances that, you know, we were graduating high school, yeah. when, you know, the recession. So we, um, so it, it has definitely affected us and we've seen how it, it has affected our parents. So I think that's something that it's always in the back of our minds as far as, you know, how can we make sure that we're prepared for something like this. And it's something that conversations that we've had, yeah, throughout the years um, and seeing, you know, what things can we do to stay afloat during something like this. Mm -hmm. So just because of timing purposes, I know there's about five people live. And if you're watching after the, um, after watching the replay, please comment and let us know that you jumped in and say you watched the replay, especially if you watch this far in, um, we have to jump to a meeting here in a second, but more importantly, I forgot to bring my charger for my computer. I feel like we hit on everything. I have like five, seven percent left. So I wanted to let everybody know that. Um, was there anything else that we needed to hit on on whether you should save or invest? I just want to be super clear here that we're saying that saving doesn't mean that you aren't saving money. It's more about just keeping the status quo and investing is about um, finding a way to innovate and use your business to help you grow. So after this, you can still continue to grow and thrive. Um, so it's never been about saving money or spending money. It's more about um, moving and innovating to Christian's point um, and finding and taking action. Anything else? No? I don't think so. Okay. Well, that's perfect timing because I have 4% left. So awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for jumping in live. If you like these um, and if you've watched and you're still watching live right now, please leave a comment below. It really helps us figure out, you know, should we continue to do live streams? So just let us know like, Hey, that was a good live stream or like, Hey, I like uh, Christian's background or, uh, you know, whatever. Just let us know uh, that you enjoyed this and that you found some value in it. It really helps us for the future. Yep. Yeah, I think that's it. We'll see you guys probably next week. Yeah. Bye.